Hi guys, how's it going? Hi everyone. We are Crowbot. Nomadic Crowbot. The Nomadic Crowbot. So today we're unraveling a bit more of the narrowboat jigsaw puzzle that is the flooring and we're going to have a crack at getting some of the boards up from the bedroom so that we can get underneath in the bilges. So for anyone that doesn't know we bought our first narrowboat, this one here, about three months ago. It's had a huge leak under the floorboards, we've extracted all the water, and we took up all the panels in the back room, scraped that for us, treated it all with some lovely new coating now we've moved on to the shower room and ripping up the bedroom where we're going to probably have to do exactly the same. But before then, we've got the last few little bits of rust to remove from the shower room. Rust removal. More rust removal. So, morning analysis. What do you reckon, Bex? How's it looking? I think we've done all right so far. It needs, going to give it a second scrape now, get off any bits that we've missed and leave it to dry. Got your gloves on? Got my gloves on. I'm going to get me marigolds. Off she goes. Welcome to boat life, ladies and gentlemen. What is it? What? What is it? Boat life! This is exactly what it's like every day living on a narrow boat. Normal daily narrow boat routine. At a normal home, you'd probably find, you know, you do the, the dishes in the morning. Um, on a narrow boat, you uh, rip up all the old rust. That's, yeah, what every narrow boat does. True story. Boat life. This is the lifestyle we've always dreamt of doing, and here we are, we're doing it. <laughs> we should do like a, a, a bastardised version of park life, boat life. <laughs> Come up with our own. Boat route. life. Boat life. Bum, badum. I'm on it, leave it to me. <laughs> Becca was struggling a bit, getting underneath and getting the rust all out. I've made her a special board so she can really get in there. <laughs> Yeah. Wipe your nose and get back to work. Strangely satisfying. I don't know if it's that achievement of getting off little bits of rust and it slowly coming together a bit more, but probably the best way of explaining it is probably like bursting a spot. Yeah, very odd. Again, central in the boat. Under here. Okay, so now we are in the bedroom area, which used to be the dinette supposedly back in the day. We've got to try and get these planks of wood underneath up so we can get underneath to the hole and start scraping that. Because we've done the shower room, now we're going to do the, the bedroom area. And then we can just let it dry for a week or so before we start wire brushing it. The plan is that we do half the boat first. We start doing this half so we can sort of live in the front side. And then once we've done all that and sorted it, we move all our stuff over to the uh, the back area, and then we start ripping up the front and the kitchen and stuff. So you don't, so you're not left with a whole boat with nothing in it. Um, the problem is we've got to the part of the bedroom where there is a huge plank that looks like it's going up underneath into the kitchen area. So we might actually have to take down a little bit of the kitchen area. But Bex has got a plan, haven't you, Bex? Yes. Let's go! So this leads through to the uh, the bathroom. As you can see, bathroom is here. We've done all this. And then, sorry about the shaky camera work, but this is the old bedroom area here. We've got these planks that we've got to try and get up. They're nailed in, or actually they're screwed in. You've got to try and get the screws up, they're rusted, they don't want to come up, so, so we've got the crowbar for that. But as you can see, this is the line for the panel, and it goes under. The front part of the, or the back part of the kitchen. Again, these ones over here look to go right under. So yeah, it looks like it goes here, under there, and then round here. Okay, let's get cracking with the kitchen. She's off. Don't overdo it. Look at her little face when it breaks free. Nut break. Nut break. You're nut, aren't you? Nut break. Donut. No. <laughs> so actually, when we first bought the boat, I noticed all these little bits, but I sort of played dumb to it because I don't know much about it. But if you see underneath, it's where it's rotten away. Yeah, absolutely. I saw it. It's around the boiler as well. 
there's obviously been wet here at some point. In the survey, it said that the water pump under the kitchen sink had been leaking, so we kind of attributed it to that. Mm. But now we know more. Expection hatch there, so that's going to be interesting. Well, will it? <laughs> it's... Will it be interesting, or will it be? Heartbreak. Isn't it lovely that somebody, when building this boat, took the time to put these inspection hatches in? Only for someone else to go and put a lovely flooring over the top so you can't bloody access them. Oh, that's not... Look at that. Completely rotten, that is. How is that even a... At this point, there isn't any more surprises, though, is there really? It's actually fully cut off. In, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that another one? Um, no. I don't know, I think it might be. You can see the outline. Yeah, of the you shape, can. Can't you? Yeah, when you lift it up, you can see it. That will be one. It's, and got it's in the be, middle. It's got to be to do with this overplating, surely. That's, Those that genius the... people who commented, thank you very much. That's uh, that's number four we found now. Yeah. And there might there's probably going to be one in the be the bedroom too. Yeah, I think we'll want to ultrasound it just. Oh yeah. But perhaps we don't need to weld more patches. Oh, it's probably quite obvious that we're going to have to go through the whole boat. We sort of accepted that when we removed that board in the in the shower room. It's pretty obvious. I think we were mad in fairness and just trying to be hopeful that when we'd done the back room that it would just be you know the area where the water may have been collected but it's looking more and more like the whole hole would have probably had water all the way up it maybe for like 10 years or something you don't know do you? It's uh, it is the winter months so cruising's out the window now anyway for the rest of the year so it gives us something to do get to know the boat and we did have our marine specialist also have a look and we'd seen similar stuff before it wasn't anything worth really really worrying about bit of elbow grease is that the right word hard work is what it is and bex loves hard work so off you go bex so ladies and gentlemen we are upping our hull protection today with a da -da -la -la -la. galvanic isolator so when you're moored in a marina and you're hooked up to shoreline power, often you get like stray currents in the water and this can eat away into your steel hull. So these act as an ab like a sort of absorbent little device to counteract those stray currents or something like that anyway. And this one's ace because you don't have to wire it in or anything. It's like an inline plug. So you plug it into your, um, your plug on the boat and then you plug the other end into your lead and up to your shore power. So it's really cool. Don't do it that way. The, the other end. Plug this in there. Protected. Not the best design here, you'd probably be better off screwing it. Came with a whole load of sticky corner bits, but for the time being, because I don't think we're going to keep it up there forever. Safety first. No, we'll hold these. Done. We don't pull it. You've got to give it a little bit of a just to check that it's it not going to go anywhere. Here we go again, guys, back into the bedroom. You're not going to snap wood like this, are you? It is snapping, look, yeah. It's cracking all the way down the middle. Oh, look at that, eh? Looks like it was... Was it attached? Well, now we've got to do the next one. Yay. 
<laughs> losing it. I'm absolutely losing it. Bex has come up with this idea of just sawing through this bit. So the reason for that is because this wall down here is bedded into the floor so it has a little notch that sits in the subfloor and we had that problem on taking out the bathroom wall and the easiest solution is to just cut that notch off and then we should hopefully be able to move the floor out of the way. But it's a really awkward job. So we've come across another inspection hatch, guys, and this time it's in the bedroom. Oh, that's a big one. Don't you open that trap door! <coughs> Buttons everywhere. Is that a button again? Button. Yeah. Do you reckon? And straight in there, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think it is actually. I think it's just the way the rust is bulged. Oi! With gloves on. It's great. Man. You happy? What a shithole. I don't talk about my house like that. We started at the kitchen now. We couldn't get the board up because of this unit in the way, in the kitchen. Bex is absolutely bloody determined. Ah! What have you done? Oh, I just caught my finger. What on? Right in there. Right, the final push, ladies and gentlemen. I managed to snap a big lump off when we were trying to get it out. This theory of putting this board, pulling it out from beneath, the uh, dining area, it's not a dining area is it? It's a kitchen. A kitchen area. But it is about to blow, isn't it? One step beyond! <sighs> Woohoo! We've done it. We've only gone and done it. We should have had it done by 11 o'clock this morning, we thought, and then we would just be gutting it. But this was so hard. That has been a right pain in the ass of a thing to get out, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you sort of set targets in your mind where I want to get that done and then I'll finish for the day. And that was the target, so I'm happy. Where do you want the light here? It's probably better in the daytime, but this has been brewing beneath our bed. Yeah, yeah, we know what you're thinking, it's not actually Mars. So Look at that. It's actually got that bubble underneath it nearly. It's like a gap, isn't there? Is like... that because it's got rusty and then got rusty again underneath it? Oh, it's you're rusty. getting all the fun stuff, Bex. Sorry, I just want to do one bit. <laughs> it is addictive. It's like, it is like picking a spot or something. It's not a great deal of work actually, believe it or not. That one over there is already done. Once you move the ballast and stuff. Only took you an hour and a half, Bex. True. <laughs> I'll get the kettle on. And are we going to find any more belly buttons? Maybe. This looks like it could be some sort of belly button all area. Okay, so removing all the ballast taken a little bit longer than first anticipated, but Bex will get there. <laughs> Removal of the ballstall area. You wouldn't want to drop them, would you? So we know what you're thinking, that's a lot of ballast to be storing out at the back. So uh, at this point I sent Chris outside just to make sure our back end wasn't disappearing to the depths of the river and our bow sticking up in the air. But uh, we we looked all right because from inside it's hard to tell. It's a lot harder getting the ballast out than we thought. There's some right stubborn bits. Bloody ballast. Splash of ballast in the kitchen to even things out a bit. 
Okay, so let's get our scrape on. Scraping is actually quite a fun little job because you see all this horrendous rust and then when you scrape it off, you've got a nice little surface. But in fairness, you've got to treat it. But still, it looks nice, doesn't it? Crumbles off like toffee. What's that? Another S hole! Central again to the rest of the boat. We found it in another belly button. That's belly button number four or five now. We would like to take this moment to introduce you to our boat's nipples. There's a straight line of these holes central throughout the boat now, guys. Something is definitely going down here. 